Hey everybody! <laughs> this video is going to be called uh, Five of My Favorite uh, Spinning Fiber Blending Tools or something along those lines. But anyhow, I've gotten a lot of questions here lately and uh, on kind of should I buy comb, should I buy card, should I buy a drum carter, you know, that sort of thing. And uh, as we've discussed before, fiber stuff can be expensive. So, you know, it's good to look on, uh, you know, your local spinners guild or for sale groups or uh, sales and that sort of thing. I'm all about saving some money. But that being said, it definitely, like, the question I keep getting is, like, if I have to choose one, what one should it be? Or which one should be my first? Or this is what I'm mainly doing, so should I get this or that? Like, that sort of thing. So, um, in the efforts of saving you money and time, uh, I was going to make this video. So here you go. <laughs> okay, so number one is I'm going to go with uh, cards. I almost said the wrong thing. These are carding brushes and they look like giant dog combs and they come in different sizes. Uh, I think this is pretty normal. You see it's about the size of my giant head. So uh, that is, uh, these are hand cards. And so even though it can be confusing because they look like dog combs, but these aren't what we call combs in the fiber business. That's something else. So these are cards. So um, for carding brushes. So the way this works, is you stick one under your armpit <laughs> step one and uh this is some really nice natural brown merino and so that's what i'm going to use to show you and i will back up is you layer a little bit of fiber on here and these can be used for different reasons some people do make little like uh rollogs like little so that you can wool and spin with off of these almost like a mini blending board I use these a lot for exactly what you see here, kind of fiber that I want, that, you know, is clean. I washed this, but it was raw fiber that I kind of want to get, you know, more well behaved. So you load, not too much. You don't want to put too much. Put it on here. And you don't want to be, like, I think the biggest mistake people make with these is they're like, bam! <clears throat> you know, you don't want to do that because then you'll... <laughs> You'll mess it up and you'll like hurt your elbow. You'll get tennis elbow. But you want to gently, gently be nice to the fiber in the hand cards. Kind of comb them till it all kind of goes in one direction. And then you can kind of flip and go the other direction. And you kind of keep doing this till, see it looks all nice and pretty now. And it looks all, you know, all the fibers are going in one direction. And then you kind of you know, the t go that way. So see that transferred all of that onto here. Cause see how the teeth are kind of si angled sideways and the whole thing is kind of angled sideways. But so when you do that, then it transfers it all over here. And then you can then card it some more if you want. And then same thing, roll it on there. And I got a little something else in there. Throw that over there. And then when you're done, you then see how you get the angle of the teeth and the angle of those teeth. And then you can roll it magically up like that. And that's how you get, like I said, so you can kind of roll it off into what's called like a little roll log, or you can just pull it off in like a clump. But now you went from like this kind of lumpy, bumpy mess to a nice, uniform even though done somewhat rushed in front of a camera little roll log that you could then start here and the fibers all nice and soft and go in one direction so uh, that's how you use hand cards and you can in a pinch especially if you're trying to save money and you're just starting out you can get go to the store like PetSmart and buy giant dog combs but honestly I looked at that and giant dog combs are way more expensive than you think they're gonna be so I honestly I think you'll end up spending way more money than you would want to spend on giant dog combs instead of just trying to find like a good deal on a decent pair of hand cards so I would uh, recommend that for oh you can also while I'm showing you here for the sake of demonstration you can this is the same fiber if you're wanting to like I said you can really get artsy and creative with this so I'm just putting some of the same fiber on there and then here's some pink. So you can also use it kind of like a little blending board. And you can blend your fibers. So we got some pink and some brown. And then as you're 
parting it together, it blends your fibers together. And so then this is one of those things that, you know, you can get all artsy, you can add sparkle. So a good pair of hand cards, I mean, you will, uh, you know, burn some calories, which is always good, but it definitely, it's a very versatile tool where you can, um, you know, you, you can use it to kind of process more raw fiber, or you can use it to, uh, you know, take fiber that's already clean and in good shape and, uh, you know, do more artsy things with it that way and make some cute little roll logs or uh, spinning fiber bats with some blended color and texture. So I would pro usually recommend cards as your first thing I would look into getting, and these are just Ashford. I actually bought these used from somebody here locally. So that's where I got these. Um, but I think they're a really good, in my opinion, beginner first tool, just because, like I said, you can use them for many different things. Everything from like a mini blending board to, uh, you know, if you had a fleece and you cleaned it and you needed to, you know, do more manual labor, they're good for that too. So yay for hand cards. Okay, number two. So the second one I want to go over is these are called combs. So uh, combs come in different shapes and sizes, like pretty much everything. Some of them have like a double layer of spikes for if you're like super serious. And uh, some have a single layer like these. Um, I'm perfectly happy with my single layer. Um, I do not use my combs that often. So, and they are, I mean, they're handmade. They're nice. I got these at the spinnery in Gatlinburg and, you know, yeah, they were handmade, numbered, and, you know, they're, they're a cool thing. But, um, you know, they can be a little pricey too, like anything else. But the way you use these and kind of, and this is of course my opinion for why I would use these, is I use these for like a longer wool sort of situation. This is a uh, long wool sheep and I've cleaned it and dyed it with indigo, but you can see how it's a much longer staple length <laughs> than that merino we just did. And I think this is, you can see it's still kind of locky there. Um, I use these for if I'm trying to make top roving or roving top. I feel like that's one of those terms you hear a million different ways. And that's basically for when you want the really fluffy, um, the really fluffy kind of loose fiber to spin from versus like more of a uh, roving, which this is a roving. So something that looks like it came from a mill and it's in like a long rope. That is roving and top, spinning top, is like more like fluffy stuff like this that you would, uh, this is what people like to use for like long draw. So how you use these is first off, please be careful. You could seriously kill somebody with these things. They're like wolverine claws. So uh, you break into my house, you know, and you're doing me harm, I have weapons. But <laughs> the way you use these, and there's better videos than this, and we do cover this more. All of these techniques are covered more in my uh, Spin Your Own Dream Yarn course. But the general idea is that you load the fiber on and then you're passing the combs through each other and then kind of flipping them. And you keep kind of going back and forth with your combs and your fiber. And this is why, like I said, I personally wouldn't want to do this with, like I said, Merino's more delicate and it's also shorter fiber length. I like to use co uh, combs for longer fibers or if I'm trying to achieve that pretty lofty spinning top. Um, whereas, like I said, I personally wouldn't want to use this for like a merino like you saw on the cards. But they do an excellent job of uh, getting tangles out. And you can actually, you can then take like a diz um, or some people you'll see actually spinning from the comb and you see a little lump of something in there but you see how you can I mean you can just pull it off like this and it's like perfect and beautiful and I love it so that is what your uh, comb is used for is to get this pretty and you see, look how long that is that pretty long lofty fiber that way and I think of it as like it's good for locky yarn that's got tangles in it you know, like you were thinking about combing out your own hair, you would use a comb, not like a little dog brush. <laughs> so it's a very similar idea. So uh, that is why I would use a uh, hand card 
I mean, hand comb versus a card. So if you are buying this, I would say if you're wanting to mainly, if you're wanting your end result to be spinning top, you need combs. Or if you're wanting to really use and process, uh, you know, long, more long wool lock sort of fiber that way, you probably, I mean, you could use the cards, but you'll probably want hand comb. So I would say the difference between one and the other is one, what result you want, and then second, what kind of fiber you most see yourself using. So uh, that is what I would use the hand combs for. Okay, so this one is a blending board, which as you can see, this one looks a little funny because it's homemade. So if you want to see how I made this uh, homemade blending board, I have another video called, uh, like, how to make a homemade blending board. <laughs> so you can either search it or I'll try to be responsible and stick the link in the uh, description somewhere in this video. But, so, whether or not you have a funny looking homemade one or one you bought from a store, how you would use a blending board is, I like to describe it for, it's like you can make the rollogs that people do the woolen spinning from, which is where you want it wrapped like a little cocoon or cigar. And it's also fun because you get to kind of like paint with the fiber. So the way you, up, first off, get it, get it where the tongs are going in the right direction. So yeah, you want the, the tongs are all kind of going that way. And I'm just gonna do something real quick without much thought here. But the idea with a blending board is that you are putting the fiber, kind of layering it across a board here. And then you can take, and this actually is a dog brush. <laughs> I used an actual dog brush and kind of, you know, got it going in the right direction and you can kind of load it in there. and. Uh, then this is some different fiber with little silk nips or noil in it. So I'm going to layer that in here. And like I said, I would normally, if, you know, this is something people get very artistic where they're laying like really different colors. This is some uh, Star Bright. It's like a nylon. You know, you can really layer things in here, which I really like about it. And also, kids really enjoy using blending boards. It's a great introduction to, uh, to fiber blending artistically. So, like I said, I'm just kind of grabbing things I have laying here for the sake of showing you. But, you know, so you would layer it all on there. You'd probably get more than that. And, you know, you could add sparkle and really have it look a lot better. But the general idea is that once you get the fiber on there and you've kind of painted it on there like you want, you take dowels and put it here and you clip the uh, little end together. See, this one may look a little funny because I didn't put that much fiber on here. You want to make sure you get all your little ends. But you kind of pull and roll, pull and roll and like I said, I missed some there. I didn't load enough fiber on this, but I just wanted to be able to show you. And then I always kind of take it off the end and roll it in my hand a little bit to kind of lock all the fibers together. And then you take one stick one way and you pull one stick out and then you can slide it off the second stick. Huh, and it actually turned out really good. Like I said, so this one isn't the prettiest because all the colors were pretty much the same. But you see you've got one fuzzy little end here. And it looks like a little cigar, but all the fibers are going in a circle. So then this would be perfect for woolen spinning because I can start right here. And I could do a lot long draw and it would come right out. So. Oh, man, I was getting dizzy. <laughs> Um, you blending boards, like I said, are great for, uh, I like them because you can like paint with the fibers and you can get really artistic with the different, um, you know, different colors and textures. If you really want to play with adding sparkle and bamboo and texture, you can really have a lot of fun with that. You would also like, um, a blending board if you prefer making rollogs, which are great and actually the official preferred method for, uh, long draw spinning. 
And of course, like I said, I, if you have any questions on, I have more videos and then we do have a, uh, our course, our dream yarn course that goes step by step for like, what is this? And what is that? But we do have some videos on long draw versus short draw and woolen and worsted and roll logs and all that. So please explore around. But if that's the kind of spinning you're wanting to do, you're going to want to make roll logs. And one of the best ways to do that is, especially one of the most affordable ways, is off of a blending board. So uh, that is why I would like a blending board. Okay, so drum carters. I kind of, I think I counted this as two different ones, but I did want to show you a shot with both of them in it. My drum carters are both by Brothers Drum Carter. And I love them, and I think it's a great company, and that's definitely who I would recommend. Um, I, this is the baby brother, for obvious reasons, and then this is the standard size. So I just wanted to have a quick shot of them next to each other for, uh, you know, size comparison purposes. Okay, so the drum carter is probably like the top of the line, is or what most people would think as far as fiber blending tools go, because they are pretty fantastic. They, um are basically like little medieval <laughs> machines almost. And the general idea is they have two drums, a big one and a little one, and then this little thing called a liquor. Some brands have like a third little drum, but I think the little brush works just fine. And it's, uh, you know, easy and lightweight. So the general idea with any drum carter is that you feed the fiber through here on the bottom, and uh, then you crank it through and the two drums then card the fiber for you. So it's kind of like the same idea as the hand cards, but you're not having to like hand card it, and it makes like one big long piece of carded fiber. So there are different types and features for different types of fiber, and that's why I'm counting these as two different ones, because I use them for two different reasons. But I'm showing you on here. And this is, like I said, the Baby Brother. It makes a one ounce art bat. And the reason that the Baby Brother is really cool, and this is by no means one ounce of fiber. I'm uh, just showing you how it goes on here. But, um, and then you would pull this up so that you could get it off. This one, they have different sized teeth. And... This one's got longer, wider spaced out, and they're actually kind of in rows of two. They're like double spaced. Uh, and this one they advertise, and why I think it's great is, one, it's very affordable, and two, well, it's affordable for a drum carter. <laughs> and two, it I find it very versatile. The longer tines, and then I really like the little two-by-two two row thing. They advertise this, and they have a much better video on their site. Um or their YouTube channel, on how you can really make, if you're wanting to make, like, locky yarn. Actually, I've got some. Here's a more rough lock yarn, and you can see this handles very well for texture. I'll put this back down in this little guy. There you go. So see, it really, it can handle more unusual fibers, and will leave it as more of a textured bat. Whereas the my other drum carter, I ordered with the like smoother teeth, so it's got um, more little teeth that are closer together, so that it's a finer comb, so it's gonna make a smoother bat. Whereas this one is handles rougher fibers better, or just will leave it more textured. And the general idea with uh, any drum carter is uh. See, and with this little guy, I, I did actually just use this little dog brush because it was the perfect size. You know, as you're loading, like I said, this is by no means one ounce, but you know, you can smooth it down that way. And then when you're ready to take it off, you pull it off like that. And like I said, you would have a lot more and you can pull, up, pull it off in like a long bat like that. So that is a general Drum Carter 101, and why, sort of a case for why you would like these thicker tongs. I found this one, this one was my first, uh, this was my first Drum Carter, and so I used it, and I loved it, and I still use it a lot. 
for um, if I had like more of a rougher fleece that I was wanting to kind of like mass produce. <laughs> um, it was definitely easier to do this than the hand combs. And uh, with the thicker, more art bat like uh, texture of the tongs on the baby brother, or this particular drum carter, I felt like it's definitely, it would be a chore to run thicker fiber or coarser fiber through the finer drum carter. It it's, takes longer to get it on, it takes longer to get it off. So this one definitely, I always call it like my little workhorse. And I felt like the bats that came out of it, for me, were very smooth. I was selling bats that I made off of this. I still do. And so, I mean, don't let the term rougher textured bats throw you off. I personally felt like it was very versatile and, um, you know, you could make both smooth and thicker bats off of the, uh, tines. Most drum carter companies, and this one included, I would imagine, and I'm not affiliated with them at all, so if I sound stupid, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I believe you can order the different sizes with the different carding cloth on them. So if you're like, I want a big one, but, uh, I want like that longer tongs or more rougher texture. And like I said, I'm no expert, but you know, whatever company you choose, look into their different teeth ratio, I guess. <laughs> but that's the general idea is that the more teeth per inch, you're going to have a finer comb and the fewer teeth or longer teeth per inch are better for like textured rougher art bats. So I think that's the general idea. But once again, you know, ask somebody smarter than me. But this whole video is just geared for, you know, how I use things. But, you know, once again, like I said, I mean, to me, that looks really smooth. That looks really nice and smooth. And like I said, I only ran it through for like hardly a second. But that's how, you know, it would come off that way. Okay, so here's the big one. I'm not going to waste your time showing you exactly the same thing on this one. But it's the same, same idea. Just it's a obviously bigger machine. It's, uh... Got a few extra bells and whistles, and like I said, they vary from brand and size, but um, the main difference with this guy is, here, let me hit the camera over here, and of course it's all dirty, I was just blending stuff, but see how this one has shorter tines, and it also has a lot per inch. So this one creates the really smooth art bats, and if you're wanting to do, sorry, <laughs> camera, if you're wanting to do like lots of silks, lots of really fine fiber, like silk, uh, you know, mohair, cashmere, you know, really fine little fibers, and you're really wanting to blend them, you know the difference. I mean, you can look online at art bats you're buying, Either, you know, the ones that are super smooth and all the colors are blended really well together, you want one like this with the finer teeth that there's more teeth per inch. If you really love the ones that are kind of more textured with like lots of different stuff in them um, for like art bats sort of thing, then you'd probably want something more in the middle um, than this one. But a drum carter is an investment, but it's if you're wanting to make art bats, like it's pretty much what you gotta have. <laughs> So, um, you know, a drum carter is a wonderful investment, but when you do look into getting one, you know, just look into the pros and cons of the different, like, teeth per inch. So, sorry for the Blair Witch style camera there. But, uh, once again, here is the tines on the, uh, the smaller one. So, once again, that is it. Those are my, uh, five choices for fiber blending and why you would use each one. Um, of course, like all my videos, this is my opinion according to me, <laughs> but with having a fiber business, I do use all of these tools very often and for different reasons. So though I've tried my best to give you the reasons for why I would choose one over another for different projects. So if you have any questions, you know, drop a comment below and I will do my best to answer it for you. And, um, yeah. So anyhow, Happy fiber blending, and I hope that was helpful. And we do have other videos more in depth on, uh, like I said, some of the different terms that I threw around in this video as far as spinning terminology or, um, you know, fiber prep. So uh, just check out my, my channel, and you'll probably find it on there. Or, like I said, comment below, and I'll try to link you. <laughs> have a good one.